Podcast. I'm your host, Julius Hammond, a.k.a. King J-Rock. That's my nickname I've been given ever since I was a kid, so don't judge me for it. That's just what I was called. Um, today, we have a wonderful guest here um, via virtual. He has some great content and some great experience that he's going to share with you guys. Before we get started with that, I want to thank also my team for doing this. Um, we get my guy, Ethan, my guy, uh, uh, Daniel, his brother, Trainee Films. Um, we here at our Ontario Podcast Studio. Go online to OntarioPodcastStudio.com um, in order to, uh, you know, book a, a session with us or whatever. If you have a podcast you want to start or record or whatever the case may be, uh, you can do it here. You can also bring your own props so we can store them for you. Or if we have to provide the props, you know, it'll, it'll, for a little fee, um, we'll be able to do that for you as well. Um, again, uh, I'm here to bring so much value to you guys and uh, add so much value into your life. It doesn't matter. There's five components to building wealth. There is, uh, you know, uh, spiritual wealth. There's mental wealth, knowledge. There's health, you know, physical body. There's finances, and then there's relationships. So the guests that we're going to have on uh, coming within the next weeks, months, and years to come, those are going to be providing all that for you, okay? So uh, right before we get started here, again, Thank you for joining us. We're going to bring some fire content to you, some fire. It's going to be a fire show. I appreciate everybody who's listening and everybody who's been, who saw the first episode and gave some great feedback. I love it. I love it. So I appreciate all comments are welcome as long as it's within, you know, it's tasteful, whatever the case may be. But at the end of the day, this is what we're here for. Wealth Trans Podcast is here to provide. So um, my first, my, my guest for today his name is uh, Mr. Marco Roberts. Marco Roberts, are you there? Um, it's lovely having you here, man. Uh, I know we got introduced to each other by a mutual friend, uh, Joseph Ortega. Uh, he's a good buddy of mine. Shout out to Joseph. Uh, thank you for this introduction. I've done some uh, some research on you and some reading and, and, and uh, reading upon you and stuff like that. And I love what you're about, man. Uh, I really do. So um, my question to you is, my first question to you is, who is Marco Roberts, and what is your story, my brother? Tell the audience. Let, let us know what's going on with you. <laughs> That's a good question, my friend. That's a good question, and I'll try to answer it in 30 seconds. You know, I'm first and foremost, I'm, I'm French-Canadian, so I was born and raised in Canada, and then I moved to the United States about 22 years ago. Okay. Um, probably the best thing to define me is I'm kind of a business nut when it comes to it. You know, and at the age of 12, my parents opened a second business. Mm-hmm. And they were looking for a manager during the summer. And then they decided to put me in charge. Just to kind of tell you the kind of person that I am at 12, my parents put me in charge of a business during the summer months. So I've basically always been this business-minded person. Okay. So after college, my journey evolved very quickly from, you know, working for the man yes. for a few years to very, very quickly starting my first business at the age of 27. And I never really looked back after that. Wow, that's amazing, man. So uh, you started your business at the age of 27. I mean, like, how was that? Because I, I started in network marketing at 25. Um, and so I didn't really start my own business. But, you know, I read the book uh, by Robert Kiyosaki called The Twenty First, uh, the Business of the 21st Century. And he was talking about in that book how you go to network marketing companies, low overhead, and a lot of the good stuff that comes with that. So um, how was it to actually start your own business at 27 years old uh, for, for other ones who are looking to start their business at that age, around this age? Yeah. Yeah. Hard. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me let me just say the story, right? So, sure. So my background is in is in hotel and restaurant management. That's my degree. That's my the, the business that my family was in in when I grew up. Okay. So my parents, my family owned restaurants and bars, and so um, after college, I worked in the industry for a few years. And after about five years, I I figured that I I knew enough. Mm -hmm. It was time for me to start my own place. So the first thing I wanted to do was to start a restaurant because I had so much experience. You know, you think about this. I'm 26, 27 at that time, and I already have probably 15 years of restaurant experience plus wow. a degree in hotel and restaurant. Wow. So I felt pretty confident. I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going to start this. So I started to work on a good business plan, and, uh, and then I went to the bank, and I presented my business plan to my banker. And no joke, the guy laughed me out of the bank. Wow. He literally laughed at me. He said, he said kid, there's no way anybody's going to give you any money. Wow. That restaurant. And 
I was so frustrated. I think I, I think I cried actually. I think I cried because mm-hmm. he was so arrogant. And um, I, but I went back home and I kind of dusted up the uh, the humiliation. Mm-hmm. And I looked at my fiance and I said, you know, but there's no way we're going to be able to start this restaurant here. And then very, to make a very long story short, my fiance had a lot of connections in Central America. Mm-hmm. So we decided to pull our money together. At that time, we, we probably had about $30,000 between her and I. Okay. And uh, we flew to Central America and learned to speak Spanish mm. and opened two restaurants in two years. Uh, opened, operated, and then resold those two restaurants before we, we went back to Canada. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome, man. Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, even yeah. for you to even have... For you, for you and your fiance to be even come together to be able to do that, that's awesome in itself because um, a lot of men don't have that significant other to be able to help them with their, you know, toward their goals and their dreams. And for you to have that, that 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 speaks volumes. That speaks volumes. Um, question, another question for you. You know, the, the lesson is this: no, sure. the lesson is this, right? You have to be willing to do whatever it takes. Okay? Yeah. Like if you allow a banker or or whomever, you know. There were a lot of challenges along mm-hmm. the way, right? I mean, nobody. Can you imagine, like, we moved from Canada to Central America. Yes. Okay, that's a, it's a completely different world, different languages. Nobody in our family thought it was a good idea. Everybody tried to discourage us from going. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but we, we, you know, we just wanted to do it. And then once we got there, we had to learn the language, we had to learn the customs, we had to learn the laws. Yeah, we had to make connections with the local business people so that we could actually start our first restaurant and then eventually a second restaurant. So, but the the, the lesson in this is that you know what when you know where you want to go, you should never allow anybody to stop you. Mm-hmm. You should never allow anyone to to deter you from your goal. Yes, because there's always going to be forces that are going to be going to be playing against you. Mm-hmm. You don't want to allow those forces to deter you from from your goal. And like you said, there's always going to be forces to deter you from that, and that's their job. Their job is to deter you. But if you understand who 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 you serve, and and what your higher power is, and what your and what your um, understanding on this earth is for, I mean, nothing nothing all that doesn't matter. You know what I mean? It, it really doesn't. Um, and a couple of things that you said, a couple of things that you said in regards to moving and everything, to learn a different language. That's difficult in itself. So I have a, a question on that. When you were learning the language, now did you start the restaurant while you were learning language, or did you learn the language first and then start the restaurant? We learned the language first, but the truth is this: right? my first language is French. Okay. And Spanish and French are from the same Latin root. Mm-hmm. So honestly, it was not that hard. I mean, it's it's a challenge because you have to learn the language. Mm-hmm. You know, I I think the only word I knew in Spanish when I went to Guatemala was cerveza, you know, a beer. That's all I, I was 27 <laughs> years old. That's all I knew. Give me a beer and I'll be all right, right at that time. Yeah. Um, so I had to learn the language, but it's, honestly, we went to school pretty much full time. We, uh, we hired private tutors. And uh, within about a month, mm-hmm. we spoke enough to be able to kind of get by. Wow. And uh, not enough to review contracts, but we had people in our family. My, my fiance had a, an uncle who had worked a lot in Central America who was fluent in Spanish. When it came time to reviewing contracts and stuff like that, mm-hmm. he helped a lot. So we would fax, back in those days, right, we would fax those contracts to him. He would review the contracts, redline the contracts, and send them back to us. So and that's why I'm saying, you know, this is not simple. And anytime you want to start a business, it's never going to be simple. No, it's, it's not. It's never going to be easy. It, I think the the person who starts a business is a different person. Yeah. If you think you can be a normal, average, and ordinary person, you know, if you can, if you think you can be just like your neighbor, if you think you can be just like your cousin, just like everybody else in your family, just like every every other kid you went to school with, but but you're gonna have different results. You're gonna have different a different destiny. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're completely delusional. The first thing is I think you need to embody that attitude, that mindset, that mm-hmm. persona mm-hmm. that actually can build a successful business. I think that's the number one number one thing to start a business. 
Yeah, the, the mindset of an entrepreneur is something great. I mean, you have to have perseverance. You have to have tough skin, discipline. I mean, these are some of the principles that if you don't have them, you better you better get those real quick because, it, it, like you said, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. The, your your cousin, your neighbor. If it was easy, that's why building wealth is is hard. It's hard work to build wealth because uh, it, it, it's not going to work. Uh, it is going to work, but it's not going to work a nine to five. You have to go to work on yourself. That's the first thing you have to do before you start a business or anything. Work on yourself. Even myself, I, I, I'll take my myself, for example. I had to work on myself before I started my credit repair business. Then I then I did my then I leveraged that to my exotic car business, to my private equity firm that I run, to my being an author. All every step that I taken, I had to uh, uh, make sure I had the mindset and reinvent myself to make sure that I was disciplined to be able to handle that. Because what comes with that criticism, what comes also what comes with that is hey people saying that hey you know what. This might not work for you. You know, maybe starting this podcast is not going to work. I've had some people say that. Well, you don't have the contacts. You don't have this. But I I've always been a perseverer. I've always been someone who's like, you know what? I'll find a way. If I don't have the money, I'll go get the money. You know what I mean? If I don't, if I, if I don't have the contacts, I'll build the relations with the people who has the contacts to be able to one day, because one day I'll, I'll, I'll have that relationship to where I can formulate and get those contacts and – and, and take it off from there. So you have to have a different mindset. If you don't have that mindset, then you're going to be like everybody else in this world. That's it. You know, Jay, I think the mindset starts with this. I think you have to flick a switch yeah. in your head. And you need to start realizing that life is not meant to be easy. No. I think we live in a world of illusion right now. You know, mm -hmm. Kids are living on Instagram. And they're living online and on TikTok. And they see... 22 year old multimillionaire driving, you know, $500,000 cars. Exactly. They think, That's what I want to be. That's what I want to do. Yeah. The truth is, it doesn't matter if you take the path of becoming a business owner or if you take the path of building a career. If you want to be successful, it's going to be hard. Yeah. You're going to have you. I love what you said. You said, I had to get to know myself first. Yep. I think it's one of the most important things. You know, there's, tons of psychological studies on that. And most people who are convinced that they are a certain way, right? So if mm -hmm. they're convinced, you know, this is who I am. The reality is that this is who they are. Mm -hmm. So it goes 180 degrees in the other direction, mm -hmm. right? So people don't know who they are. People operate from, uh, from uh, paradigms of, you know, whatever their parents wanted them to be, the environment they Tradition. grew up in, yep. the, mm -hmm. the kind of a they yep. got the friends they grew up with and then they, they form they form some sort of a persona or an identity mm -hmm. and then they think this is who they are this is not who they are and then they wake up at the age of 30 35 sometimes even later sometimes they never wake up huh. and then they're like wow i've been going in the wrong direction my entire life because yep. that's not at all who i was yeah so you, to know yourself is is to develop this capacity to sort mm -hmm. inside of you Mm -hmm. what you really are. I think there's a force inside of you, right? There is. I think there, I think we're all born sort of an innate force. Yeah. And then to be able to practice to listen to that force inside of us. Mm -hmm. That force guides us where we want to be. And then and then you leverage that. Mm -hmm. Instead of trying to overcome weaknesses in yourself, a lot of people are like, well, you know what? I, I'm not good at mathematics, so the only way I can be successful in business is to be good at mathematics. No, maybe you're a good social person. Mm -hmm. So leverage the fact that you are a social being to build a business with your strength mm -hmm. instead of trying to overcome your weaknesses. Mm -hmm. Right? Absolutely. So I think that's the right. But know yourself is one of the most important things. In fact, I have what I call the four keys to success okay. that I have developed. And it's, to know yourself is, is one of them. Okay. Uh, do you want to know the other three? Sure. What's the other three? So to know yourself is to know yourself is very important, right? Okay. Number two is you have to know the world. Okay. You have to understand the world you live in. You have to be curious mm -hmm. about the world you live in. It's like you know, if you play hockey, it's one thing to know how to play with your hockey stick mm -hmm. and how to hit the puck and how to aim at the net and and how to skate. 
But you also need to understand the environment. You need to understand the game, mm -hmm. right? And what I'm finding is that very successful entrepreneurs are dedicated to mm -hmm. understanding the game of life. They're fascinated by history, by human beings, by psychology, by economics, mm -hmm. by, by politics. And not politics like what we see on TV. No, the real politics, you know, the interaction between human beings. How mm -hmm. do human beings interact together? Mm -hmm. I want to know how this game of life is played, mm -hmm. right? So number one, you have to know yourself. Number two, you have to be interested in the world, know the world. Mm -hmm. Number three, you have to have emotional stability, emotional strength. Yeah. You see, I, I, I call it emotional intelligence. Emotional? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Emotional intelligence, yep. that's a good word. Most people are so triggered by the environment they live in. You know, if it rains one day, that's it. Today is a bad day because <laughs> it rains. Or if, uh, if the kid took the car and forgot to put some gas in the car, that's it. Mm -hmm. If the traffic is heavy, if the coffee is too cold, if the line is too long, if your best suit is still at the dry cleaner, mm -hmm. that's it. So by, by 10, 30, 11 o'clock every morning, most people have already ruined their day their chances of being successful yep you're day. right yep because they don't have that emotional mastery mm -hmm. right? so you have to i think what i'm what i'm finding is that the you know and i've been very successful to hang out with multi-billionaires mm -hmm. i mean multi-millionaires and billionaires mm -hmm. in my life um and what i'm finding is that these people have one thing in common and it's their ability to filter out mm -hmm. whatever is happening in the world mm -hmm. where the average person cannot filter out anything, you know? Mm -hmm. If somebody does something around them that they don't like or they that doesn't really match their view of reality, then it starts affecting them. Emotionally. Their whole day is ruined. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, um, I, I mean, uh, you hit on a couple of things that, that, uh, that really hit home. I mean, it's crazy because I love my wife. Um, uh, I hope she don't kill me for this, <laughs> but I love my wife. But she uh, sometimes what she'll that's do never is never a good idea when you say, I, <laughs> first I love my wife." That, that sounds like no, I, I, I know, nice. I know she's gonna watch this. But um, one thing about her, and it's something she has to work on, and she'll tell you she has to work on this. But she will let one thing that that you know one, one a person or whatever she'll let something like that kind of almost ruin the whole day i have to kind of reel, reel her back like well honey just because someone said this doesn't mean that you're this, this is going to be like this you know what i mean or the day shouldn't be ruined like you said you, they look outside they see that it's raining outside it's eight o'clock in the morning your day hasn't even gotten started yet and you're already in that mindset where like I mean, you got another, what, 21 hours or whatever it is left over. You still, you know, win the day. You still go out there and, 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 and make it happen. That's just, just because it's raining outside doesn't mean that your day is over with, but they'll take one event or what somebody said or, 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 or a weather, a climate of weather, and they just totally forget about the rest of the day. And their day could have started it. off awesome. They yeah, they lose it. Absolutely. Um, second that, I think that's most people. Sure. Absolutely. I think that's most people. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, second question for you. Okay. So, um, I was reading your bio and a client named Alex, uh, Damien called you a through and through business genius. Okay. Um, what makes you a business genius and so-called business systemizer? I thought that was interesting. Uh, I wanted to, want to know your thoughts on that. Yeah, I think, you know, when I was in college, I, I kind of stumbled upon something okay see my i studied management and, and business administration okay, okay. that's what i studied when i was in college okay and i knew that whatever i was learning i was not learning from me i was learning because i was going to have to teach it to my future employees mm -hmm. in a sense mm -hmm. i was learning how to manage businesses mm -hmm. so it was not just information i was going to have to use myself it was information i was going to have to use the rest of my life yes so i i thought that college was very serious Mm -hmm. right? I took this very seriously. Now, my goal was not to pass tests and exams and quizzes. My goal was to really acquire the information and retain that information. Okay. So I developed a concept when I was in college of kind of conceptualization. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to tell you what I mean by that. Whenever a teacher would say something, instead of me just 
looking at this as one element and then say, okay, I, I need to remember this mm -hmm. so that I can put it in the exam. I would start conceptualizing. So I would create these concepts, right? Mm -hmm. What does it mean to manage employees? And then I would start creating concepts. And every time a teacher would say something, I would add a piece to my concept. Okay. And then eventually you have enough pieces. You're like, whoa, okay. I think I know how to manage employees. Mm -hmm. And how do we manage finances, mm -hmm. right? And then teachers would talk about things. And then I would keep on adding pieces until I felt like I had a concept. Mm -hmm. Now, and it was the same thing in marketing. It was the same thing in, in every aspect of business management. Mm -hmm. And eventually, by the time I graduated, I had I didn't have like a body of knowledge that I had that I had remembered. No, I had created, carved my own concept okay. of managing business. Okay. Now I stumbled upon that. I cannot tell you that I'm you know I literally stumbled upon that when I was in college because I wanted to retain as much information as possible, mm -hmm. and I and I spent the rest of my life operating in that fashion. So today when I, you know, when I read a book or when I listen to a podcast or when I interview someone or when I'm, I listen to someone, mm -hmm. I'm always trying to add on to my concept. So instead of me being a, being a participant in life, I am a creator of my own life. Mm. Instead of me being, looking at the parade, I'm actually leading the parade, the parade yep. in my own life. I get you. you understand? Mm -hmm. So. Because because everything is not about it's not about the information that's out there. It's always about okay. I might I might have fifteen pieces of information here, but very quickly I can eliminate you know nine of them and keep six of them because they they fit inside of my concept. Mm -hmm. So I have developed all of these concepts and principles that I apply to business today. And because I've been doing this now for thirty years, I have a I have a level of expertise when it comes to business that is. That is really hard to equate. Mm -hmm. Equate at this point. Okay, so pr pretty much, uh, just for the audience in layman's terms, what you do is you take bits and pieces from other people who are smarter than you. You in, you put it into your own masterpiece. The negative, the the the, the negative um, parts you keep out, but you you retain the positive and you create your own. And then that's what that's how that's where you formulate the 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 systemizer from, right? So imagine this, imagine this day, okay? Okay. Let's say this is a straight line, okay? And then the, the entire concept is a straight line. Sure. Okay. Now I might have this piece. I might I might figure out this piece, then I might read a book and figure out that piece, and gotcha. I have that piece, and I might have this piece. I have pretty much the whole thing except for this middle part here. Mm -hmm. Right? Well, once you have a lot of pieces, you can create this middle part. That's true. You can figure out a middle part. You know, That's true. Because you start seeing correlations between the things that are that are happening. Mm -hmm. So, I'm always conceptualizing my own concepts, mm -hmm. and um, and then I bring those to, to the world. You know, so instead of copying, so you know, like for example, it's, a lot of coaches today talk about uh, mindset. They're like, you know, I'm going to help my clients with mindset. Yeah. Well, what do you mean help your clients with mindset? First of all, there's a million ways to help your clients with mindset. Mm -hmm. How are you going to help your clients with mindset? Mm -hmm. What is it that you do specifically? Are you helping them address the limitations that are showing up in their lives today yeah. because of the way they grew up? That's a mindset. That's way. true. That's a way of helping mindset. Yeah. Are you helping them motivate themselves on a daily basis so that they can achieve better results? That's mm -hmm. a mindset. That's a mindset, yeah. Are you helping them streamline their thoughts so that they can actually expedite the performance and the results that they want to do? That's a mindset. Mm -hmm. You understand? Know Somebody's mm -hmm. like, oh, I do mindset, I do mindset. If, if When I hear the word mindset from the, from the mouth of a coach, I know that this coach has not created anything. Mm -hmm. He is like a parakeet repeating concepts <laughs> that he's heard from the world outside. There you go. Right? Yeah. And then, and then most most coaches, most quote unquote experts, mm -hmm. are nothing more than parakeets. They figured out a concept that's from somebody else that actually kind of made sense. They borrowed it, and now they're spewing it out like mm -hmm. it's their own, but it's not their own. And you can feel it's not their own because they did not conceptualize it themselves. Wow! Right? So you, you start having a conversation with somebody like that, and very quickly you're like, "Well, I don't think I can trust that person because you know that there's no depth 
all they're giving you is something regurgitated. Mm -hmm. They're telling you something that they're telling you something that they read somewhere, heard somewhere, but they're not telling you something that they've actually conceptualized and created themselves. Wow, that's amazing, man. That's fire. That is fire advice, man. I, and you know, it's crazy. I know that, but to to hear it from you and the way you you broke it down, that's awesome. I mean, uh, there's a lot of people out there, like you said. You know, I, I grew up listening to Les Brown and to a lot of people. Um, Les Brown is a great motivator. You know what I mean? Tony Robbins, great motivator, things like that. Um, however, you know, there's a lot of coaches out there that always talk about mindset, like you said, and they're they, they're not specific on mindset. You know what I mean? Like, if, but if they can be specific to a certain, um, um, they could be a genre or whatever the case may be, they, uh, industry, whatever. Work on mindset to okay. If you're a real estate guy, work on mindset for someone to be a better real estate investor. If someone is into e-com, work on mindset for someone to be a better e-com. Uh, you know, whether they're building an e-com business or whatever, you know, op uh, optimizing or whatever, automating or whatever. Yeah. So it has to be specific. You can't just say mindset and that's it. Mindset has a lot of different ways you can take that. Absolutely. And that confuses a lot of people. And so you got a lot of you got a lot of people who invest into these these guys and the, the they're making a lot of money. Yes, kudos to them cuz they figured it out. But the ones who are pay, paying the money, a lot of them they, they get a lot of, you know, courses and everything, but it's like well, they they not they not getting what they really pay for, you know? No. You know, a couple of years ago, there's a study that came out, and it was published in Forbes magazine. Okay. And this is what the study said. It said that, so they interviewed a lot of founders of companies mm -hmm. that had failed and closed their businesses. And they said, why do you think you have to close their businesses? Your business? 42% of them agreed that the reason why they, they, they closed their businesses was because they could never find a market mm -hmm. for the services or the products that they had invented. Mm. Okay, listen to this. Forty-two percent, almost half of the businesses that fail fail because they do not meet a need in the marketplace. Yep, yep, that's, yep. That's absolutely ludicrous when you think about that, right? Yeah. Well, I have trained probably about three hundred coaches in my life. Mm. Okay, and I'm I'm going to tell you something. This is endemic amongst coaches. Mm -hmm. When I work with coaches, it's typically the number one problem is that. They're trying to copy a concept that they've heard somewhere else, a concept, and then they try to apply that to their client, mm -hmm. it, and it doesn't work. No, you need to put your own bits and pieces. You need to put, you need to put yourself into your offering. Mm -hmm. You need to bring something that has an additional taste to life. You need, like, if you're gonna coach me, if you're gonna say, you know what, I'm gonna coach you. I have developed developed the expertise and the mastery to be able to guide you in your life, in your business in your career, where in your relationship, anywhere you want to coach me, mm -hmm. you better have conceptualized some solutions mm -hmm. instead of just being somebody who just regurgitates solutions. Mm -hmm. Because if you're somebody who just regurgitates, forget about it. Wow. Very soon people are going to be like, you know what? Hey, I heard that 15 times on, on YouTube last month. Mm -hmm. why, why, should I, why should I work for you? Why should I work with you? Mm -hmm. You want to bring an additional flavor I think that's one of the most important things. And that additional flavor comes from your taking whatever whatever is happening in your life, taking whatever you're learning from courses, and then you conceptualize something. And then you bring you bring a new method, you bring a new a new formula, you mm -hmm. bring a new system, a new process, a new template, a new checklist, mm -hmm. a new step by step method, a new framework that you have conceptualize, mm -hmm. and now you say, you know what, with this method, I can really, really help you. I'm going to tell you what, so of the 300, approximately 300 coaches and consultants that I have trained in my life, mm -hmm. probably at least 70% of them, that's what we spend the first couple of days working on. There you go. Just defining an offering that belongs to them. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying, you know, I'm going to copy the competition, no. Let's define something that based on your life experiences, based on your knowledge, your education, your who you are, based mm -hmm. on all of that, let's create a value proposition mm -hmm. that's going to completely, completely dethrone any of your competitors. Wow. And uh, so it's a lot of work, but the, it's a lot of work, but you have to do it. You don't have a business. 
you do not have a business until you figured out a way to help your marketplace better than the competition. So if you're copying the competition, forget about it. Wow. Never going to work. Wow, that's amazing. Man. That's amazing. I love that. I love that. Um, speaking of uh, some of the big time people that you work with, I read your bio, <laughs> like I said before, and um, you are friends with some big A-listers. I'm talking about Mel Gibson, Charlie Sheen, uh, Sylvester Stallone, Mark Wahlberg, everybody who knows. I mean, you know all these people, but Mark, Mark Wahlberg, you know, the Transformers, a lot of the stuff that he's done, Sylvester Stallone, um, Rocky, that turned into Creed. I mean, we can keep going on and on. Um, how does it feel to, for one, know these people, but to share the stage with these type of men and entertainers? Like, how does that feel to know that, hey, I, I, I've worked with these guys and I've, I've consulted them or whatever, whether it's on their business or whatever the case may be, but I've been around them because a lot of people don't get a chance to be such to be around such powerful A-list entertainers and men in the world. So how does that, how, how does that make you feel? So, you know, I'm not somebody who gets, uh, I don't get excited about people, celebrity people. Yeah. I, I've never, never did, never did. Like I, I remember when I was a kid, when I was a teenager, Probably the biggest celebrity that I really like was Vince Neil from the from the band Motley Crue, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I was 24 years old. I actually ran into Vince Neil, and I had a beer with him. And uh, I'm like, "Hey, man, you look like Vince Neil." <laughs> He's like, "Yeah, it's me." <laughs> I'm like, you're Vince Neil. Wow. He's like, "Yeah." I'm like, wow, man, do you mind if I sit down? He said, "No, no problem." And honestly, he was probably the the one celebrity that I revered the most when I was a teenager in the 1980s. Okay. And it was not a big deal. I just sat down with him and then we drank a beer and uh, it was a lot of fun. So, I'm, so I don't have that thing, right? Okay. But I'm going to tell you something. There is a reason why these guys are on top. There's a reason. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay. They have developed expertise. They have developed, you know, probably one of the best guys that I, I've hung out a lot with him is uh, Vanilla Ice. Oh, wow. And okay. That's interesting. It, it, it's pretty amazing. Like, you know, we, we, we could be hanging out. Let's say we go to a, you know, a coffee shop and we're sitting there and we're just trying to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. Like literally every five minutes. And it's, like, it's not like Vanilla Ice is like, you know, the number one on the chart right now. Yeah. I mean, when was the last time he was number one on the chart? <laughs> you know, like in the 1990s. I know. It's been a while. So it's been a while. He's kind of a has been, you know. He's yeah. kind of a has been. And yet, you're sitting with this guy, and literally every five minutes, somebody stops. Are you Vanilla Ice? Can I take a picture? And these guys are yeah. just like, yeah, 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 no problem, no problem. And then they find a the book, and mm -hmm. like literally every five minutes. And they they just, uh, it's almost like they they have developed a certain vibration. Okay. If they they developed a, a very different vibration. You know, if you uh, if you've ever been around royalty, and I remember the first time I was around royalty, it was. Uh, Prince Albert of Monaco. Oh, yeah, yeah, and, okay. And the how even heal these people are is absolutely hard to understand. Like, they're so, like, nothing flusters them. Yeah. Nothing, they're, it's almost like they know that no matter what, everything's going to be all right, everything's going to work. And you see, I see that also sometimes in celebrities, that mm -hmm. same attitude. And I also see that in very, very highly successful people, whether it's, it's, it's highly successful in their career. Like imagine like a, a neurosurgeon with 15 years of experience mm -hmm. who's operated on, you know, 5,000 brains. Yeah. They walk with some sort of an attitude. It's almost like they walk on a cloud. Yeah, they, so their I, confidence I is through the roof. Through yeah. Mm-hmm. They say what? Say what, Jay? No, I say their confidence is through the roof. Absolutely. It, it's beyond confidence. I don't even know the word to use because, you know, you can be confident, but you can still have a little bit of a remaining doubt. That's true. These guys have no doubt. It, it's a, it's an embodied, it, it's an embodied confidence, almost like it's fused at the molecular level. Their confidence is not intellectual. Mm. You know, like you and I, you know, we're confident people, mm -hmm. you know, but we're confident. It develops confidence. These people, 
they haven't developed confidence. Mm. They own confidence. Mm. It's, it's pretty amazing to see. Mm. And that's, that's what I've noticed about some celebrities. That's what I've noticed from royalties. And, and he's very, very acclaimed and, and uh, accomplished people in life. I've noticed that they, they have that attitude. They own comp. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. Um, Having confidence, but owning confidence is two different things. I never looked at it, and I've been a businessman. I have my own business for almost 12 years now, and I still haven't even thought about it like that. Like, I I, I own a lot of stuff. Don't get me wrong. You know, I'm not just talking about material. I'm talking about mentally. You know, I, I, I own confidence. I mean, I, I, I exude confidence and things, but I've never really, like, looked at, it, looked at it from that perspective. Own confidence. Like, me, like you said, me and you are confident. Like we can go out here and probably sell ice to an Eskimo or fire to the devil. You know what I mean? Because we have that confidence. Like, hey, this person I might not buy, but all we gotta do is sell one or two of these things, and we'll get the ball rolling like that. However, owning it is a whole different perspective. Like that's wow. I've never looked at it like that before. Thank you for that. You taught me something. Let me tell you how I do it. Over the years, I've had to kind of help my clients reach that level. Now. It's almost, it's very hard to reach that level, but you want to tend towards that level. Yeah. Okay. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you how I do it. Okay. So this is, I've studied neuroscience. Okay. And, um, and that's how I've developed kind of the model. What, whatever information we are trying to ingrain, mm -hmm. whatever knowledge we're trying to ingrain can be absorbed by us at three different levels. Okay. Okay? And so whether it's information, whether it's, let me give an example. You say, I'm confident, I'm confident, I'm confident. That's mm -hmm. knowledge that you are trying to put inside of you, right? Yeah. That's information. You would love to absorb that information mm -hmm. and have that information for the rest of your life, right? I'm confident, I'm confident. Or, you know, you read a book and you say, oh, I want to remember this. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, like uh, there are, like for example, just a, Fun fact, right? Yes. There are 11 billion transistors in a in a in an iPhone. Okay? Wow. Well, that's just a piece of information. Okay. How do I make sure that I remember that? Well, there's three levels. There's the three entry points. There's three portals that allow information inside of us. Number one, intellectual. Mm. Right. So. I can listen to something and then I'm like, oh yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It's very intellectual and I get it. Like I'm when, when I'm reading the paper in the morning, you know, oh yeah, oh, okay, there was a fire across the street. It's very intellectual. It gets in my head and that's it. Mm -hmm. Most likely within a day, a week, a month, it's a gone. year, it's gone. Yeah. Right? The second level is emotional. Emotional is like, oh my God, somebody died in that fire? Mm. Whoa. Whoa. And then you start, wow, somebody died in that fire. Now you have an emotional attachment to it. Mm -hmm. An emotional attachment could be a positive emotion or could be a negative, negative emotion. emotion right? yeah. But it's an emotional attachment. Most likely, that if that piece of information, you will retain a little bit longer. Yeah. Okay? But the best way for you to retain information and for that information to transform you is to allow the information to come through not your mind, not your heart, but your nervous system. Mm. I call it visceral. So it's not intellectual, it's not emotional, it's visceral. Visceral, okay. So if you, when you're talking to yourself, if you can actually create a visceral moment, you'll never forget it. Wow. When you're interacting with information outside of you, if you want to retain that information, you need to create a visceral moment. A visceral moment is something that it's information that you feel physically. You're like, oh, whoa. <laughs> whoa. Yeah, I've had whoa. a few of those moments, yeah. Oh, that was mm -hmm. big, man. That was big. Yeah. Okay? That kind of information you will never forget. So when I try to help my clients create precipitate change, right? Because you know, uh, when people come to me, they don't want change next month or next year. They want to precipitate. Mm -hmm. You know, the guy's about to lose his business. I do a lot of business turnaround. The guy's about to lose his business. He doesn't want to wait a year, you know, after he's lost his business. No, we need to save the business right now. Mm -hmm. Something must happen. And the thing that must happen is not just in the business. It's mostly 
inside of him. Mm-hmm. Because if he doesn't change, the business is not going to change. He's going to keep on doing the yeah, that he's exactly. always done, led to him almost losing his business. Absolutely. So, so I need to get inside of him. I need to precipitate a punch. Mm. So I kind of wake him up. And then we can actually. So the, the way that I do that is I've developed methods to kind of get inside of them. Mm-hmm. Kind of grab them by the by the tripe, by the gut. Wow! Like, <laughs> <Okay. laughs> wow! Wow! That's amazing, man! Wow! Whew. Wow! Your te- I know I'm I know I'm I'm hosting this podcast, man. But you are te- I'm feel like I'm in a master class right now. I'm feel like I'm being taught something right now, and and. Man, I'm gonna have to talk to you off camera, man, because this is <laughs> this is amazing. You have me, you got me really thinking over here. I didn't, I never thought of the way you're putting it. I've never thought of a lot of stuff that way. I really haven't. And uh, maybe well, let, me do, let me go. Let me go full circle. Sure. Let me go full circle. Just so you can understand. Okay. Remember what I said at the beginning. I said what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to develop these concepts for myself. Yes. And then when I find a hole, I patch the hole. I figure out a way to patch the hole. Mm-hmm. Right. So, so as a business expert, I'm devoted to the success of my clients. I'm devoted to the success of my own businesses. You know, mm. I buy I mostly buy businesses instead of consulting or advising businesses. I still do both, but mostly my efforts are into buying businesses. Mm. So I'm devoted to the success of my own companies and my clients' businesses. And then so sometimes I find holes. I'm like, okay. I'm doing everything I can to help this guy out, and then he's having massive successes. Mm-hmm. Yay. I'm doing everything I can to help this guy out, and I'm not seeing the success that I want. Okay. Why? And then I'm like, I'm, I'm trying to look, I'm looking, and I'm like, wow, okay, he never really absorbed the information mm-hmm. in, the, in the way that that guy absorbed the information. So how, can I, how can I affect him? How can I rattle him inside of his soul? Yeah to make them move forward and do what needs to be done in the business. Wow. So over the years, you know, you find holes in your own concepts and you go look out and you find solutions. That's how I stumbled upon neuroscience. And then for the last five or six years, there's a, a doctor of neuroscience in France that I have been interacting with to kind of perfect my own methodology. Absolutely. Is there any books that you can recommend in regards to neuroscience that you've read um, and, and, and for our audience here to be like, Hey, I want to read this book to I'll say if, 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 if Marco is so busy and he can't take on any more clients or whatever, is there anything that, Hey, read this book, study this, read this news, whatever the case may be, study this person in order to help them with their, with that, that same, same type of mindset. There's gotta be books about that. I haven't really specifically read books just about neuroscience, Okay, but I read books about all sorts of aspects, like the science of flow, for example. A really good book is called uh, Stealing Fire. Stealing Fire. I might have it. Okay. Uh, I thought I had it here, but I thought I had it here in my office, but I don't. That's okay. But Stealing Fire, there's a company, there's a group of people, it's called, I think it's called Project Flow. Project so Flow. So they've studied okay. the concept of how do you reach a state of flow mm. where things kind of happen in your life automatically and okay. then the uh the, the founder of project flu wrote a book called stealing fire it's a very interesting book right uh there's um, atomic habits atomic habits you know, i know about that one the mm-hmm. kind of habits. develop the kind of habits that are actually going to move you forward um you know I'm, I'm a big fan also of all the old books like from the early 1900s like all these metaphysical books mm-hmm. you know that we're talking about how do we how do we affect our future by envisioning our future. Mm. All this aspect of metaphysics is very, very interesting to me as well. Okay. So I, I don't think I could point to a specific book that just talks about neuroscience. Um, um, but um, but there's a lot of books out there. There's tons and tons and tons of books out there that talk about different aspects of neuroscience. But I'm sure there are books. That, I'm, sure, I'm sure if the audience is interested, they can try to a bit of research and they'll find books about it. You know, for me, the journey started when I studied, I studied neuro-linguistic programming. Mm-hmm. By the way, there's lots of books about neuro-linguistic programming. So I studied neuro-linguistic programming, and that's kind of 
where I discovered neuroscience mm. through the process of neuro linguistic programming. Um, no, uh, so, no. Anyways, NLP is very, very well known. It's been around since the 1970s, 1980s, neuro linguistic programming. No, we are, I, listen, uh, every, we all appreciate the nuggets that you gave. I mean, just like I said, that's awesome that you, you know, uh, everybody, audience, listen, it takes years to develop this. This is not something he's done overnight. Like you, ha he had to constantly practice and train himself to get to this way. And the knowledge that you obtain, that you have obtained from uh, over the years, man, I, 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 I thank you for that because you're, like I said, you're teaching me right now. Um, some stuff that I didn't even learn. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate, appreciate the compliment. But it's, at the end of the day, when you have enough pieces and you start triangulating information, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's so fun. I mean, sometimes we, my fiance, by the way, not the same one I had you know, 25 years ago, a different fiance. Okay. The other, one, <laughs> yeah, the other one was my future ex. <laughs> now, now I have a, future ex, now I have yeah. a new one. I got you. <laughs> uh, so you know sometimes we let's say we walk in a restaurant mm -hmm. I have developed such a, a deep knowledge and understanding of business like I can literally just walk in a restaurant and I know if this restaurant is making money I know how long they've been in business I mm -hmm. know like I know everything within seconds within seconds yeah right and one time we went to this restaurant I live in Scottsdale Arizona okay and we went to do this restaurant we had never been there, and we walk in. I said, "Oh, new ownership." Mm. I said, what are you talking about? I said, it's, a, it's a new owner. Mm -hmm. I said, "She said, no, no, I've been here before. This is this restaurant has been here for a long, long time. It's probably been here for thirty years." I said, "Yeah, but it's a new owner." Mm -hmm. This is Marco Roberts. How do you know that? Mm -hmm. I said, "Well, let's, let's see." So we sit at the table. The server comes over. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, uh, no, I'm, I'm being nice. They say, hey, by the way, how long has the new owner been here? Oh, it's been about a year and a half at this point. Mm. So, okay, good, good, good. Congratulations. She's like, there's no way. How do you know that? Mm -hmm. Well, I know that because I just by looking at the operations, by mm -hmm. looking at how the, the restaurant was being operated, I knew that there's no way because it was very badly operated. Okay. And there's no way that a restaurant can be in business for 30 years. And I... I looked at the furniture. I it was clear that this restaurant was an older restaurant. It was mm -hmm. not a new restaurant. You know, you start by looking at the floor. You can start by looking at the, the paint that is starting yeah. to scale. The drywall, all that stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I knew the restaurant was an old restaurant, but the way it was being managed. You know, we walked in at 7 p.m. at night. There was only one other table, but there were still three waiters on the floor. Mm. So that tells me that. You're not making money. If you have only one table and you still have three waiters and they're in the corner chit chatting, that means that the the manager doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah. This place is being extremely badly managed. Yep. So it's impossible that this business has been around for more than a a year or two because that they would be losing the business. Yeah. So I knew this was a new I knew this was a new a new business. Anyway, so so we laughed. But I do the same thing. You know what? I, I wrote a book, and by the way, if your audience is interested, they can go to Marco mm -hmm. Robert Book dot com. So M A R C O R O B E R T mm -hmm. Book dot com. Okay. And then uh, I wrote a book, and then I give it, I give it away for free. And I wrote this book because because of an experience that happened to me. One time, I one of my sales guys had hooked up, hooked me up with a client, so I'm, I'm meeting this client for the first time. And then the guy's waiting for me outside of his store. Mm -hmm. And um, he's like, hey, Marco, how you doing? I'm Jack, or whatever his name was. I don't remember. That was probably 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. And he says, welcome in. So we walk in the store, and I said, do you mind showing me around a little bit so I understand a little bit more about the business? He said, sure. So we start walking around, and I'm asking him some questions and, and this and that. And we're just chit-chatting, right? And I'm pointing out some deficiencies and some challenges and some potential opportunities in his business as we're walking through his business. Mm -hmm. Eventually we'll take it to the back of the business and then there's a warehouse and we start walking through the warehouse and I'm looking at the shelves and very high shelves and I'm asking him about inventory and all sorts of questions. Mm -hmm. And then we make it to the back, back, back of the building and then there's this big delivery door and there's a pickup truck that's pulling there and it's basically, you know, putting some stuff in their pickup truck. Mm -hmm. And my client goes to this guy 
that he obviously knows. And he's like, Roger, I want you to meet my new business consultant, Marco Roberts. <laughs> he said, I've only known this guy for 45 minutes, and he's already put $100,000 in my pocket. Wow. And we all laughed. But I thought to myself, I'm like, wow. Wow, this is, it's true. I, I, because of what I pointed out, mm -hmm. because of the opportunities that I pointed to, because of the deficiencies that I showed him how to fix, just in mm -hmm. 45 minutes walking through his door, I had already put probably at least $100,000 in his pocket. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know what? One day I'm going to write a book about this. And I did, right? So the book is basically eight ways that you can very, very quickly add money to your bottom line. Mm. It's called Say Hello to More Cash Flow. And it's available for free. Uh, you don't have to buy it. Go to MarcoRobertsBook.com and you can download the book. And um, and it's just it's just a cool it's just a cool concept, you know. Because you know, I've developed so many so many concepts that very very quickly I can I can pinpoint the results, you know. Wow, thank you for that, man. Uh, MarcoRobertsBook dot com. Make sure you guys go there and get his book. Yeah, by the way, by the way, a lot of people want to put an S at the end of my name. <laughs> yeah, Everybody I was tempted. To... Marco Roberts. Yeah, yeah. At first, I thought it was. Yeah, at first, I thought it was Roberts too. You know, because usually when you talk to someone with a last name, it's not usually Robert is the first name, and the last name usually is with an S, Roberts or whatever. You know, but thank you for correct. Thank you for correcting that because I was doing that at first too. <laughs> but Marco Robert dot uh, Mark Marco Robert Book dot com. Um, make sure you guys go get it because it's free. Like he said, you don't have to pay for it. It's free. So, um, and it would definitely uh, add some extra um, uh, cash or capital to your bottom line. A um, couple more questions for you and then we'll wrap up here. What other businesses, sure. events, or even master classes do you run and can help um, anyone that's struggling in the financial world? Like anything else that you already shared, but anything else extra that you might want to give to the public, you know, master classes, events, or businesses that you run that you can help others in, in the financial. Yeah, so I, I used to travel, I used to travel around the world and I, you know, I used to do a lot of live events before COVID. Yeah. And, um, I'm not really doing a lot of live events anymore. I'm not interested in that. I've been there, done that. From the age of 40 to the age of 50, man, I, I was on the road between four and eight months a year and wow. delivering, you know, training crowds around the world. That's train thousands and thousands of people. Mm -hmm. Not really interested in doing that anymore. Uh, since COVID, I, I find myself really cozy at home. I'm either in my office or at home. And um, we had a baby in 2020. Congratulations. So I had my first born at the age yeah. Thank you. So it's, you, had, uh, you, had what it's called it's a, uh, you had what is called a pandemic baby, huh? <laughs> That's what it That's was. Right. There That's you go. Right. Yeah. So we have this little monkey running around, and it's a lot of fun. So I don't want, I don't want to travel anymore. Okay. So I do have I do have online programs that I deliver. Uh, probably my mo my favorite one is uh, when I ran my own consulting firm. I had developed a training for consultants for business consultants. Right? Okay, and it's literally everything anyone would need to know in order to become really really successful in business, or anything anybody would need to know in order to affect the success of another business. So mm -hmm. whether you want to use this for your own business or whether you want to use this for as a consultant. So I developed this training. It's about 20 weeks. And a few times a year, I just, I put together a group and I, I, I deliver this training myself. Okay. It's extremely powerful. You know, I've had people with, with MBA tell me that they're, what they learned in 20 weeks with, with me is way more powerful than what they had learned in their MBA. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like an MBA, literally. Like we, we go through the entire process of running a business from, from managing yourself, managing employees, managing revenue, managing sales, managing teams, yeah. managing cash flow. We even go into managing projects and, uh, and how to consult and how to grow businesses. So mm -hmm. that's my favorite project. I only deliver that a few times a year. Okay. I also have um, a group that I that I uh, that I build where um, we speak on a regular basis, and all we talk about is marketing. Okay. All we talk about is marketing. How to grow your business? Because what I found is a lot of business owners, that's their number one challenge, right? Yeah. Yeah. Could their sushi be a little bit bigger, better? Yeah, of course. Could their, you know, could their uh, team be a little bit better? Yes, of course. But their number one challenge is how do we 
add revenue. Yeah. How do we create more revenue? So uh, I have this ongoing course where we, we cover everything from strategic marketing, mm -hmm. you know, like the way to think like a marketer, mm -hmm. all the way to tactical actions that you must take in order to grow a business. So mm -hmm. that's an ongoing course um, uh, also that I okay. have. And I also have a short uh, two-month uh, course that I deliver once in a while. It's all, it, it's all about finance. It's, but it's, it's a fun way of understanding basic finance in business mm -hmm. so that you can actually run your business successfully. Okay. Uh, not advanced concepts of finance, basic concepts. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I have developed this course is because I realized that the average business owner has no freaking clue about finance. That's true. And and their accountant is not helping. Most accountants are all they care about is you know give me the numbers and then I'll make sure you don't pay too much tax. Exactly. Exactly. Right? But you as a business owner, you want to know how do I use those numbers to actually make better decisions? Yeah. How do I use numbers to make sure I'm actually going in the right direction? Correct. How do I use these numbers to to achieve my goal, mm -hmm. right? So the reason why you don't know about this is because there's many more, than, that there's not just one type of accounting, there's many mm -hmm. sorts of accounting. Mm -hmm. What your accountant practices is called cost accounting. Mm -hmm. What you need to practice as a business owner is called management, management. accounting. Yep, yep. It's completely different. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I teach people in the course of about eight weeks, I teach them the basics of management accounting. So that they can actually look at their numbers. You can look at your profit and loss statement and finally understand what it means. Mm -hmm. You can look at your your balance sheet and finally understand what it means. And mm -hmm. you can you can see why is why is does, does it say this in my balance sheet and why does it say that in my income statement or uh, profit and loss statement? Mm -hmm. And then start making better decisions. So those are the three offerings that I have right now. Uh, those are the three group offerings that I have right now for people to uh, to achieve better success. Okay. Okay. Well, absolutely. Absolutely. hundred percent. Thank you for that. Um, last question for you. Simple. How can our wealth champs subscribers find you and follow you social medias? You gave your website already. Thank you for that. But any other way that they can, you know, contact information, email, social, whatever, how can they reach out to you to learn more? Yeah. You know, Jay, I spent the last 20 years of my life branding myself. Mm -hmm. All I have to do is Google my name, Marco Roberts, and I basically own the entire page of uh, Facebook. So they'll find my, they'll find a way to connect with me on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. on Facebook. They'll find my private website, which is MarcoRoberts.com. They'll find my celebrity website, which is MeetMarcoRoberts.com. Okay. Uh, they'll find my Instagram, they'll find my Twitter, they'll find everything. They'll, I have a YouTube channel, mm -hmm. uh, youtube.com forward slash Marco Robert. So uh, everything about me is on the internet and it's pretty much all on page one of Google. So all you have to do is Google my name and then, uh, and then you'll find everything you need. Wow. Well, Marco. Thank you for joining the Wealth Champs family, man. Uh, I really, from the bottom of my heart, I really appreciate it. Um, I thank Joseph every day for introducing us. Um, you know, it, it's just it's just a pleasure and an honor from the bottom of my heart to speak with you, to know you. And like I said, I can't wait to build this long-term, because I'm a relationship guy, so I can't wait to build this long-term relationship with you um, and develop that um, and just gain more knowledge from you. Because like I said, I, I learned today I wasn't, I wasn't expecting to be in class today, <laughs> but I learned today a lot of stuff yeah. that you taught me, you know, just the, just the, how to own confidence and a lot of other stuff that you taught. And, and I'm pretty sure our listening audience is, um, has received that and you're going to have a lot of people reaching out to you to want to help them as well. Thank you, brother. I appreciate okay. you from the bottom of my thank heart, you. man. And thank you for putting together this, this podcast. Oh, you know, a man. lot of the, the people in the audience don't understand how much work energy and actual mm. investment you know, man they don't <laughs> they don't yes a podcast like this it's a lot of work and uh, so i appreciate you for doing that and for your willingness to bring value to to the people around you that's pretty awesome thanks so much for that well thank you brother i appreciate it man thank you so much man i i will definitely talk to you uh probably later on this week absolutely all right Bye, Jake. thank you brother appreciate you thanks so much
Well, champers, um, there you have it, man. You know, Mr. Robert is, you know, he's a he's a genius. Like he said, he's a mar- he's a through and through business genius. Um, he developed a system, a business systemizer that helps uh, a lot of people. You heard the concepts for yourself, and uh, reach out to him on his website, all his social medias, um, anything that you need. Reach out to him, and for us, subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel. Wealth Chance Podcast, TikTok, Wealth Chance Podcast. Um, what else? Uh, uh, Instagram, Wealth Chance Podcast. We don't have a website right now. We will probably within the next month or so, and we will. And we also will have some new merch, you know, um, from different different little sayings and stuff like that. It's going to be some T-shirts and some shorts and some long sleeves and things like that. Um, no underwear, you know. I know a couple people were asking about that, but no underwear. But anyway, um, till next time, Wealth Champers, we out. Peace.